Hello, my name's John. I'm going to show you how to create a simple timeline animation inside of Unreal Engine using Blueprints. If you find this helpful, please like and subscribe for more videos and don't forget to check out my website 3dassetlibrary.com for Unreal and Unity Engine assets. So what we'll do in our content browser is we'll right click Blueprint Glass Actor. We're going to type, just give it a name, BP uh, Cube. Drag that into our scene so it's ready and double click it. So we should get this window under add component, drop that down, type in cube. And we'll go to uh, compile that and we'll go to event graph. And what we'll do is we'll get rid of, um, yeah, get rid of those. So we just want event begin play. So drag off event begin play and type in timeline and we'll get add timeline. So give it a name. So we'll name this uh, bounce and we want it to play from the start, so we'll drag off the event begin and just plug in play from start. And then what we want to do is we want to double click on the timeline we've created and we'll create, create a uh, fl yeah, float value. And we'll name this um, up, down. And this is, so this sets our, our length of how long, uh, I believe this is in seconds, how long we want our animation to be. Um, so what we'll, yeah, we'll leave it at five. We'll set it to auto play and we'll set it to loop. And yep, so that's what we want. So obviously auto play self-explanatory. As soon as we start the, um, uh, our game, um, this will start the animation straight away. If you want to, to trigger this, say for instance, by a, um, an overlap event or something like that, you leave that unticked and then trigger that loop, self-explanatory, when it gets to the end, it starts again. So then what we'll do is we uh, hold shift and click, and that creates a point, so we'll want to click, say, three points here. Then on the first point, we just click on it, and we set the time value to zero, time, sorry, zero, and the value to zero. Then the end point, we'll set that to five, and the value to zero. Now, if we click these, this will bring in the left, right, and this will bring in the up, down. So what's gonna happen here is we want to get our middle point. So use these as we've got here, and we'll set this to say 2.5, so that's uh, in between five and obviously zero. And we're gonna say set this to, um, let's try something silly, say uh, 100. So then if we click this one here, it'll show you the, the down as well. So what we can do here is currently this is going in linear, so it's going up, down, and that's it. And what we can do is if we drag and select all of these, we can set these to, um, say, a nicer, say, auto. So you can see here it's smoothed out, um, and we can then move these to however we want. So we'll just leave it like that for the minute. And then what we'll do is we'll compile, save, and we'll go back to our event graph. Now we drag our cube in. And we will go, um, what do we want to do? We want to set relative transform. And we want to uh, drag out of update into our transform. Then what we want to do is we want to right click on our new transform and split the pin struct. And then we want to go to our transform location and split that. Um, there's many ways of doing this. This is just a very quick rundown to help um, help people with that. So then what we can do is we can go drag off of the cube again and go get um, location. So we want get uh, get relative location and we'll right click on the here again, split struct, and you'll see here that we've got these. So what we want to do is we want to plug our X into X on this and our Y into Y. So this is basically saying, Wherever it is in the X and Y location, we want it to stay, but all we want to change is the value going up and down. So then what we can do is we can say, essentially, drag this out into our Z location, and in theory, when we go to our viewport and press simulation, you can see here it's moving. So it's moving up and down, so in theory, because we've got our loop on, that should keep going. Now, that's a very, obviously, simple way of doing You can apply this to using the rotation or, um, to, uh, yeah, we'll try this. So we'll drag off our cube again and go um, set relative rotation. We'll plug this after here. And then we'll do drag off the cube again and go get rotation, 
relative rotation and we want to again right click on the relative rotation split struct and again right click on here split struct pin and say um, we want to what would it be We're, well we'll just try it to any of them we'll just say uh, we'll plug our z in our y in and then we'll go from the up down and drag that in and then press simulate so you can see here now it's rotating so you could apply this to anything essentially um, i believe it's better uh, better practice for, for little things like this fine maybe say open indoors but obviously you wouldn't uh, from what I understand you wouldn't want to create a whole game based off of this because I believe it uses quite a few CPU resources um, things like that so what we can do as well is off of this value here we could say go to our variables click create a new variable name it um, say speed and um, make that visible so we can see it um, inside the actual editor itself um, compile that and then we what we want to do is why is that not doing what I want it to do um, oh that's it so click on this little icon here float and then what we'll do is we will drag this in Ooh, there we go get the speed and we want to say say multiply so type in uh, the multiply sign which is on my keyboard is shift 8 and we'll go uh, we want a, a float by a float and um, we'll drag the just clear these values if you hold alt and click on that it clears all values on, on a pin and we'll drag our up down value into the top one and our speed into the bottom one and then now if we plug those it back into our things our nodes here we'll go to speed and um, turn off simulation go to speed and we'll say now if we set that to one by default that would be exactly what it was before yep so now if we set this say to a 10 in theory it should be a lot faster so there you go it's a lot faster and it's going a lot higher and um, so yeah that's a very quick rundown of how to use um, timeline animation and um, you can do all sorts of cool little things with this you know it may, as I say it might be that you don't want to say take it into a blender or may animate something that doesn't really need you know a full animation rig or something like that in, in, um, in one of those softwares and you want to do something very quickly say make a light sway or something like that um, so this is a very quick way of doing it um, hopefully this helped and if it did great